So what I thought I'd do is look at the multi-replicate command. Now you can create some interesting shapes with multi-replicate but you need to have a little bit of patience to uh, understand how it works. So we'll start with uh, basics and that is we'll create a cube and if I copy and paste that cube and then edit it and holding the shift key down and we're in world space mode at the moment I can lift it up its own height and then I'll go edit multi-replicate and you can see this Y value has been stored in the multi-replicate uh, dialog here so if I press 5 now for quantity that will produce for me a little stack of cubes with no gaps between them so that's our starting point what else can we do with this well I'll just delete that stack of cubes and select the first cube copy and paste again lift it up its own height and then rotate it in the y-axis now if I go to the multi-replicate tool the movement the offset of the starting point has been stored and this rotation which then means that if I produce the stack we get a rotated stack of cubes okay select delete select them I'll get rid of it copy and paste that cube again we're going to lift it rotate it and now scale it and now when I multi-replicate this so edit multi-replicate you can see that the scaling has been added now each of the scaling is occurring in all axes and the point was I did all that change in one go but these other two are only in one axis now you might think I can start adding axes by adding a bit and doing a bit next but you'll see that it only records one operation when you do it in that way but we'll get onto that I'm getting ahead of myself let's just see what happens here so there you go there's our stack of cubes rising and shrinking now when you start to introduce scaling options, I'll just get rid of this, you can s use the checkbox that allows you to scale the transition, so we'll, translation sorry, so I'll scale it, rotate it as I did before and then edit and multi-replicate. If I scale translation just here then the y-axis adjustment is compressed by the scaling of the object as well and you can see that it started shrinking into itself so this created a tapering shape so you have the option there of keeping the translation the same even though the object scale is changing or changing the translation according to the scale of the object so if we went in the other direction get rid of all those select that copy and paste lift it up rotate it and expand it now and then we edit and multi-replicate. If we scale the translation, the gap's going to grow. I have to use the side view to see what's going on here. Whereas before, if we didn't scale the translation, because it was a cube height, these cubes would start to collide into each other the other way. I'll show you that as well. I know this seems a bit laborious, but uh, it, it'll start to get complicated quickly otherwise. Right, so rotate, scale, edit, multi-replicate will not scale the translation so un un check, check that this time and you can see as the cubes have got bigger they started to crash into each other which is sort of the opposite of the effect when we were shrinking them okay so that's that dealt with let's uh, deal with the point I was making about what it remembers so control C control V and I'll just lift it up manually now that's moved it in two axes because I'm looking from the front view but I could I can I can move it all around in three axes. So I'll I'll do that three axis adjustment. So that was the last axis was Y. Uh, I could do a three axis rotation. Uh, last rotation was X and a scaling which said X Y again. And now when I go to edit and multi replicate, even though I made numerous adjustments, it's only remembered the last adjustment that I made in each case. So at this point if you wanted to do a three axes and have them all different scaling rotations and offsets you'd have to start punching the figures in there but you know, you know that's uh, that's down to experimentation because uh, well, well you can see the results and we'll just do a quick example I don't know what shape this is going to come out but we'll we'll just do some random adjustments so let's make this stick to fairly um, close figures to 100 otherwise the changes will get so radical that uh, you'll lose track so we'll go 5, 10, uh, 15 for the rotations, offset, let's see, 12, 
uh, 6. We'll make that 18, right? Um, we'll create 50 of these and we'll scale the translation and see what shape we get. So our shape's gone into the ground slightly. I, didn't, I couldn't predict that would have happened and it's created a sort of spiral shape. So there you go, that's offsets and rotations all in various directions. Let us now move on to something a little bit more uh, complicated, if you like. We'll apply it to a group which will allow us to make a more complex shape and then, then, then we'll do the interesting test, but we'll do the group first. So I'll copy and paste this cube and I'm just going to create a little cross of cubes for this just to give the shape some interest. So there we go, I'm just copying and pasting the cubes and laying them out. Then I'll select all the cubes together, group them. I'll copy and paste it again. I can just copy and paste the group, it doesn't really matter. Lift them up. It'll remember the offset from the starting point. So at the point you copy and paste, it'll create a zero starting point and that'll give you your offset. And what I'll do is I'll rotate this slightly. I don't know what's that, about five degrees. Uh, edit, uh, multi-replicate. No, only three and a half. I'll create a hundred of these. I'm not going to scale the translation because I've not put any size scaling in so it won't make any difference and that will give me a sort of a twisted -y shape that's a bit tall to see. So if I take this entire shape and try not to select the ground and the camera at the same time, hold the control key down and click on the things you want to get a dialog up and then you can just uh, deselect those, hold the shift key down to selectively deselect that without everything else. I can group all those groups together and I'll squish them down a bit so that it'll bring it back into our field of view and we've got something to to look at. So it's it's created a sort of a twirly tower, a bit like a drill bit I suppose. Um, you can then at this point, if, if you want, just for a bit of fun, um, select select all the cubes for example and you could convert those into cylinders so you've got like little twisted cylinders going around one another and the, the central cylinder obviously is turning but you can't see it because it's in the middle position so you've got these other ones moving around it um, if you change your transformation space to object space then you can selectively change the dimensions of the objects in there, so uh, you know, can create effects with that if you want, and that that will allow the central one of these to twist as well. So you can create some shapes like that. You could, you could say this was going to be some kind of high-tech office block, for example. If you wanted to do that, you'd need to introduce some windows. But if you were to compress the cylinders so that were like slices, for example, and then you could copy and paste all the cylinders at once. Bear in mind that these are just Bryce primitives, so then they don't have a very serious memory footprint. Slot those into the window gaps, scale them down, increase the height of them, for example, if I can just roughly line them up. And then, if you put them, I don't know, made them reflective or put a glass material on or something like that, you could create, you know, a window effect. That's really uh, an aside from what I wanted to look at which was, okay, so that's one way of using Bryce primitives to create a, a more complex object. Let's use uh, instancing. Now I've not had a lot of use for instancing, it's been quite troublesome to, for me, but I thought it might work well with this. So I've got a mesh object I made in Wings 3D, so this is this, this uh, basic shape here, and that's got quite a few triangles associated with it, so if I started multi-replicating that in older versions of Bryce, I'd soon use up all the memory and Bryce had run very slow. However, if I copy and paste this, I'll lift it up and I'll rotate it a bit and scale it slightly. Probably a bit too much there. I'll try and do a very small scale in there. Edit, multi-replicate. I can check instancing here. I'm going to add a, another couple of rotations, reduce that one perhaps and pick that two. Um, offsets, okay, this scaling factor is fairly large I suppose. I'll add another offset in there, I'm just guessing now, I don't know what the result of this is going to be. Now I'll scale the translation, as it's shrinking it should sort of curl around itself and see what this, oh well, no, that's gone off in a very strange way. So 
you saw the speed at which that operated, and there's going to be a huge number of polygons in this now. And uh, but because it's instancing, this the memory footprint is going to be tiny, so I can create uh, really complex shapes here. I'm going to have another go at that. Uh, I'll just get rid of the instance there. Um, so I'm back to my original shape, and I'll just use the control again, multi-replicate, and I'll invent something again. I don't know. Oh, 99, 99, 99, 5, 3, or oh, 2, I don't know, offset, 10, 8. Let's see where that goes. Well, again, it's curled up into the air somehow. So, what you see here, although I've not managed to get anything that's going to that's going to be much use for making a scene unless I was to create a lot of these sort of vaguely organic shapes is is very it's very heavy in in terms of uh, geometry but very light in terms of memory so that's really the the idea I wanted to to emphasize here what I was really looking for was to produce a nice shape for the the image in the uh, in the final render that I usually put with the the tutorials, but it seems to be defying me in this case. I've not managed to find anything particularly compact. I'll give it one last try at the risk of this going on forever. So there's my first shape, which is down there, and uh, I'll go edit, multi replicate. Oh, let's see, I'll not scale. Well, no, that'd be a bad idea because that's I mean it's going to get even. Well, maybe if I make these values smaller, then things will be compressed together a bit more. It'd be a idea shape. Should I be making it larger or smaller? It's hard to say. I'll put another offset in there, make that one three. Let's see. Oh that's a bit more compact. Okay. Right, this one will do then. It's another curly shape. It will seem to have come out more or less the same because of the choices I've made, but I think that gives you the idea that uh, it's very quick to work with this and I don't have to stick with a um, hundred. I can multi-replicate this up to 200 and it's still a quick operation and it seems to be forming some kind of shell shape which uh, might be quite nice to to render in um, a oh, fairly advanced form of lighting. I'll try a trambient render for this one but uh, essentially that's it really. That's the, uh, the end of the video. Have a play with multi-replicate. Make some shapes. Remember to check instancing if you're using a fairly sophisticated uh, high poly count model. It must be a mesh for instancing to work really. It doesn't work with Bryce primitives, they're already in an optimized form. Okay then, I'll, uh, I'll call that a day.